There's a beautiful place by the burn called Carlfin, and that's the place I'll return when my days come to an end. It's such a sweet spot I've never forgot. It's people, the salt of the earth, and around my tombs. of my birth in Carlton a place so welcoming Carlton Welcome everybody and thank you all for coming uh, this afternoon uh, for a reading uh, by Dermot Hayes from his uh, memoir The Road of Rises listening to Marie Cattle there singing a song which uh, deals with the content of the book and it's called The Road That Rises. Dermot Hayes is a community activist and is a actively involved in the area of inequality, racism and in supporting the right to a standard of living where one can have a say. This has uh, led Dermot into trade unionism, disability activism, campaigners around campaigns around travellers and the environment. So I'll hand you over to Dermot now to have Right, now at the age of 68, uh, I was in hospital in, in 2020, May of 2020, and I've been through a lot of medical issues so, uh, since I was 12, really. And uh, I wondered if it would be write a book, and I had a lot of things going on in my head, like really, so I said I wanted to write a book. And I came home into the hospital in July and I started writing. And by the end of, say, October, November, I asked my daughter to look at it and they kind of laughed at me because I'm not a great writer by any means and my spelling is atrocious at times. Uh, so I said, looked around, who would I get to write this for me? So I knew Brenda Shannon, who had a model of Wade already worked at a book in the Corfe New Club, 60 or 54 years of the Corfe New Club in Now Player. And effectively she had written the book with a contribution from everybody else like really. And she made a great job of it. So I said I'd ask her. So we sat down and we chatted about it. And she agreed. Right. And in all the space of a year and a half, really, maybe maybe two years, uh, she came to my house and I went to her house and she recorded me on her phone, which is a great idea, really. So and she she um, wrote down and put down and obviously we changed around and the whole lot. But uh, yeah, we did that she did not search, I did the search as well on the book, you know. Things like in the village of Corfin, the names of old places and all that business that we forgot. You know, you forget things like really. And you forget names and all that business. And then in my trade room day, sometimes you forget stuff like, you know, I've got the 70s and 80s, you know, so you forget things and the strikes and all that. So we a lot of research to do on that. And then obviously I was looking who, who we going to publish it. So I know Dominic vaguely or briefly in delivering another issue that we deal with. So I asked Dominic anyway, very willing, very helpful, and uh, well chosen that I said that no, would be back to the It was extremely helpful, very easy to work with. And Brida and myself, the three of us, we collaborated together, and we produced the book, and we produced it for last March. And we did a massive launch in Corfin, the village hall in Corfin, where it was reported to be around 300 people attending, and other people couldn't get in, really. So Amazing, just flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. I just did it. It was there standing room only. Yeah. Flabbergasted. So, you know, from there on, we've been setting the book anyway. And one of the highlights of the book is really is it's very well written. That's the contribution people are making. I've said that. Very well written. And uh, we produced up to 1,500 books. So, we all would have gone out this day. So, the light that. So we got an opportunity to tour the libraries in Clare, three libraries in Clare, and we have already one done last week, next Thursday in Scarif, uh, and um, the following Tuesday in this time, if you know if anybody in those areas, then we're on half a sixth evening. And then Dominic agreed to organize this year today, and we're very grateful to him for it, really. There's so many people I'm very grateful to for helping out, really. 
terms of propagation. And obviously, I'm not a man that has written any book before. But this is, I've done any book before. So this is a big, a big, big effort for me. So I, I, it's done now, really. So a matter of selling it, really. And then we said we did have the, the process, the, the parish audit for the and to the clear leader forum, which is a disability group. And we're doing that. And, uh, you know, I was saying, oh, boy, yeah, we did go for the big plan. We did go for it at the beginning. Which surprised me that five and a half thousand in the gold for, for the for the book really. Well, surprised me, really. Very surprised me. Easy enough to get it done. I'm surprised with it all done within two months, two and a half months. Really surprised. So all those good things that happened really and the life of this. And the quality book shows the stands of itself really. And I'm going to read but I'm not a great reader guys, okay? But I'll do my best. And uh, I read the first two pages, and then we hand over to Dominic. And if any questions after, we'd like to hear uh, contributions made yourself. Uh, I know that you're mad to you ask a few questions. So I go from here, okay, guys? I'm home with my mother in Kells on a biting every spring morning. I'm two and a half up there about, and she's hanging out cotton nappies on a long line between poles and a strong ash tree at either end of the field. At the back of our small house, he's taking a long time to ease the discomfort of my feet on the ice tingling frost green grass. I was hopping from one about about her legs, from one foot to the other foot, when my attention was suddenly diverted by the sound of enormous, loud, heavy breathing and sight of smoke. It was coming from the direction of Neil's field behind our house. My curiosity was roused and my icy clothes forgotten. I strayed away from my mother and, and toddled across the field. Cause of mystery. Too small to look over the wall, I've been to a large chink of light on the crooked limestone breastwork that peeped through the sea of crushed of cows pushing each other around, moaning and moving and smoking, coming from their big, soft, wet nostrils rising in great big clouds. I ran back to my mother, putting her scared portrait laser. Mammy, mammy, the cows are smoking. She pegged her way a line uh, on a bright uh, white nappies and turning her small lively eyes towards me, she, she beamed down on a bright smile. There was nothing else to worry about but the message on her, on her face. And she grinned and, and my clever child's conclusions. I must have known my father spoke, like many men in his area at the time. But I was surprised by how smoking. The hair belonged to my colleague and, and there were coming to the field after morning meeting. It seemed the reaction of water breath encountered in cold air, air, morning air. But I didn't know the scientific explanation then, and it seemed based on my knowledge and experience up to that point, the, the herb had been smoking. My mother, Anne E. married John Hayes on September 1943. She was 22 and he was 45. She was from Coo Kildabai and her father Andrew uh, Keane was a herdsman on the Cabot's Field on Aptagoona, Corfin. My father hailed from Drum Green, Morris Mills, or uh, eight miles southeast among the youngest nine, he was the youngest of nineteen children, some of whom emigrated to America, many of whom he had never known and more he would never remember. His brother himself who remained at the Mahon on the wet, bushy half acre, uh, became like their father in the haze a herdsman in the neighboring farms. Eddie's wife died leaving him with a large family and, and uh, he married Mary Ann Telsey and my father was a, was a child of that marriage. He knew he had, he had uh, five sisters, Lisa Fidokin who settled in Valley Brody, Dyson, another who became Anne Lane, lived in Ennis at a ripe old age of 101. Tessie, you know, lived in Corofane and for, uh, for a while before immigrated to Manchester. During his childhood, two of his sisters visited from Ohio. He, he knew a few of his brothers who, who had the immigrants. Eventually, John, uh, John joined the army and served his trade. and became a nurse. Chrissy, her older sister, had gone to England in the mid 40s to train my mother in the following, followed by 1948. At age 17, she boarded the West Clare Railway connection in Cor from Cotfrey to Ennis. The mainland train to Ross Lair on ferry to Fishgar, where she travels to the British Rail to Buckinghamshire 
and the southeast of England, where she began her schooling and nursing in Stoke Mandeville Hospital. She must have met my father by this time, and there was evidence of correspondence between the two of them. Bundles of letters from postmarks from the middle, from places like Aylesbury and High Wickham, include the envelopes from Corofet Mark stamped, were kept safely and neatly by my mother in the box in the bedroom where we, where, when we were growing up. Sadly, these letters were exactly accidentally bundled at some kind. I had no idea what they wrote to each other, but you can only imagine, based on the lifelong mutual commitment, that the letters profess much love and each other's direction. Thank you very much.
with a high proportion of women. The social life was hectic. The work was good and the wages were great. Interton was very progressive in the way it dealt with employees and supported the idea of, union, of a union, believing it was better to negotiate with staff and avoid anarchy. The first shop steward held the position for two years. It was representing only the technicians. The cleaners, the packers, the line workers and the tea makers were not represented. I put forward a motion at the meeting that these workers needed representation too and proposed that girls on the line should be getting equal pay to their male counterparts. Packers worked very hard, lifted heavy loads. They deserved longer tea breaks at the least, I argued. I was elected shop steward by, by 70 to 80% of the vote, a role I was re-elected to for seven consecutive years. At Interton, I became known as Hassel. I was always looking for this concession or that concession, a lunch voucher or a club membership that wouldn't be taxed by the, the wage-snitching PAY system that prevailed for much of the 70s and into the 80s, where over 60% of overtime wage was taken by the government. What do you want, Hassel? The boss regularly asked when I entered his big glass office. All oh, Hassels entered the castle, the lads of the Urinals would say. The Urinals were an easy place to strike up a conversation with the men, and it was here I'd often tried to persuade Jack or John to join the union or come out on a picket. I'd hassle the girls in the canteen, or while they had a few spare seconds, reprieve from the continuous conveyor belt of plastic wires and switches that had to be consolidated in double quick time within strict targets to make the electronic games. Intertown was at the forefront of manufacturing, the concepts of maverick program, programmers of Silicon Valley, and it was an exciting place to work. You felt like they were part, part of and at the frontier of this brave new world. I was born at a time before rural electrification, when our house and no, and no home in rural Ireland had electric light. Candles and windows were the light at night, and every house had an oil lamp and holder and many a smoke-stained brown ceiling. And here I was, only a short ten miles away from Kells, twenty years later, working in a place buzzing with the light of electricity and mass-producing games people played on screens with handheld controls. The world had certainly changed fast while I was growing up. As most young people do, I did not acknowledge this change at the time and took it for granted. But I was very aware of workers' rights right from the start. I simply wanted to see fairness. Oh, right. So it was day of the work for it? It was day of the purpose of tax money for 
found out after. Effectively, there was a lot of uh, tax breaks at the time for setting up new companies, and there was a 10 year lease on that. How was that 10 year lease? Yeah, mostly for export. Yeah, mostly export. Which is a bit like flying everywhere. It closed just like that, one Friday. We did no job. Like that. We were devastated, absolutely devastated. We, we had a city that was kind of common at the time. If you remember, it was a foreign kid out of the place called that city. And obviously, when you shout, but we're all sitting in, you see the sleeping out the door. People found sons and daughters sleeping out the door. You left only a handful of them. And then fellas had to drink in at night, like really. And that was very conducive to keep the solidarity between us. Yeah. Was the redundancy a bit of oh, redundancy. No, it's done. You got, you got the basic redundancy. Okay. And Patricia McCarthy was on Shannon there, she was a council mm -hmm. and she was the uh, trade union official. She eventually brought me and somebody else up to Dublin to minister. She might as well be a sickness I did. Mm -hmm. But that meant, meant nothing to me. We got the eventually, eventually months after, we got redundant. It was tough going. Like, I mean, I'm okay, I'm a single man, but those people that were young couples and married. I'd be able to set up, I got a mortgage in some cases, set up a house, boom, just like that. That was common at the time in the 80s, you remember the late after that then? Yeah, can I and I wear it the same above in Killaloo, remember? Sorry? Can I and I wear it, they did the same above in Killaloo. No, no, no. They, they made, a uh, French company they made glasses. But yeah, they closed when time to our holidays and and it was interesting what they did is because just before they closed, Marianne, one of the better machines had to be sent back to France to be refurbished or something. But they did exactly the same as that. They never came back. The only thing money might be set up in 81, 80, 81. And uh, because that's a particular skill as well, money might. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they were building it, so we need to be built about that. And then Rush Island or Syntex were setting up at the same time. Actually, Russia, that was funny because the product that were made could be legally sold in Ireland at the time, forever. What product that were made? They, they started off doing a kind of form of contraception. It was not always Yeah, do you remember that? And the was quite funny. I mean, now it's hilarious. Yeah, it's a it. That's the case of Kim Yeah, I thought that was quite funny. <coughs> yeah, so that factory is around that time. That's true. So there we are now that's any other questions? Yes. Comment you. If the two books published in twelve months, what's your answer will be good? So 
So it things like that really and the work accessible and obviously we got to know councillors and over time then we, we got, made a great pathway with the councillors and bit by bit and then the legislation came and then Bernard Taylor was in power in 92 and he did commissions report and that commission travelled around the country, came in twice Dennis and on a Sunday afternoon and they asked people with disabilities and they asked parents and they asked groups, organizations like this in Able Island, what what is you're looking for. So eventually they came out in October ninety six they launched in court with the what was her name in uh, President Kennedy's sister, Jean Kennedy Smith launched it in, in October 1996 for 102 recommendations that people would have sign language, would have uh, special needs training, would have access to schools, really. But that took a long time to change, still not changed. The special schools are still there separate, really, more or less. They're not all. There's people still going into the national school, local national school with disabilities, but the support there are not adequate enough really. But there's still special schools and they're big like really. Big. So we have to change that. But then we we got a lot of changes right really. And the whole question in of climate, that's still not started with sixty percent of the population with disabilities are under age, under sixty five, over eighteen, still under the light. So you know, it just <coughs> people that want to work. But it's always you can the academy you know about um, People having their medical card, their, their bus pass, their disability allowance, and not working full time. If they work full time, they're all be gone up. So all those little issues that we ironed out, and there's a lot of problems around that. But it's not happening enough, fair enough, like really. But um, back in '97, the first Ministry of Disability was was named really the government. That was the first time ever. So we were there at a big change, I was there at a big change, so we set up independent living groups, Centre for Independent Living, and one of the main core actions was a personal assistant, right? And you'd ask yourself, what is that? That's not a care or a home health, it's a personal assistant to support somebody when they're out and about or even at home to get their jobs done uh, and to work on the direction of the person with disability. Well, traditionally, home health would be director of the like say, care care or agencies like that, or the, the uh, care would be the same under the direction of somebody else. Like, but the personal assistant would be under the direction of the person with the disability. You know, if they want to go to the film book, I'd go to see the film if they want to go to town. If they want to read a book, that personal assistant would do that. So we're trying to, it's happening now, but it's not legislation. We're near, we're very near getting it into legislation, very near getting into legislation. They have it in Sweden, they have it in Denmark, they have it in Germany. So we're trying to get the same model. And we spent a lot of time in and out to Europe as well, like, you know. Myself, I went four times to Europe and Strasbourg campaigning. Like, so it's all about keep the pressure up. But the reality is, the big organizations now, Trump, and if you're in the organization with the Naval Island, I think the way, there are big CEOs, they are well paid, well paid. So it's in their interest to keep the service the way it is now, their service. It goes big decision. I mean, the idea of the way there is like the early 60s. You know, so that's a big issue. So, yeah, things are changing, but they're slow. But it's getting the education to the general public. I mean, we have accessibility to all public buildings now by law, and pretty good now. The care club comes in very good now, that might be good, and other places, but there is still enough changes to happen, really. I, I, I find the lift outside that we got up absolutely fantastic, because I, I can manage the stairs slowly, but having a, having a lift is absolutely phenomenal. And um, I believe any, any business that is not on the ground floor should have access for a service degree. Yes. Uh, in order to get a business license, uh, for example, there, there are many places that would have a coffee shop on the ground floor, 
but the third one will be upstairs, or downstairs. Now, I, as I said, I can manage the stairs with my stick, yes. but there are people who cannot, and that, that's not, not right. Um, if somebody wants to set up a business, um, it should be enshrined in law that um, any uh, public convenience is fully accessible by everybody. Just so you know, one incident now happened. My wife is dead, right? She won't be shine. So when the 19, 2019 election happened, uh, I was running for the president. So she had asked months in advance for uh, a sign interpreter that the law had come in that time. And she was promised it, right? In the West County, in Ennis. And when it came to the day of the sign language, the person didn't come, right? Was told to not to Didn't want any. And uh, she was really frustrated. And because uh, I was running for election that really. So she wanted to keep up with that happening. So she took the case, the ombudsman, and if she eventually won the case, then took her about a year and a half to win the case. But she won the case that they should have. So they had a problem. So things like that have changed really, which is good. But sometimes getting through the law and getting let's get taking out the government or taking out policy can be a bit like that. I have a thing that, and I don't know how the law could help it, but when you are disabled and you come to a disabled parking place, sometimes people who are in their cars stop there and they think it's all right. They wouldn't park there. They wouldn't go away and leave, which is no good to you because you can't stop up in the traffic and wait to see will they go away. So you have to, you have to go away yourself. And I think that's, I don't know how to highlight that, but I was in position a few years ago that I couldn't put on walk from the outside to the inside right now again. And, and so I haven't had to go away altogether because the parking place that I had my eye on was there with, with, with the car, with people in the car who are just kind of waiting for someone and they're going to go away in a few minutes and they don't realize yeah, that the place is taken while the car is in it, even if they're in it too. Anyway, I, 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 I think that a sign up, not a law, 
in the parking lot. Don't stop even for a second. Something like that. Stop and drive no, no. You know? We'll yeah, should we be done about that campaign? Um, and then, yeah, you've been involved in lots of campaigns, but I, but I definitely agree with you, Virgin, that, you know, you, you, when you started off, you went for women's rights and trade unionism, mm -hmm. which was stepping outside of your own uh, oh, yeah. problems or challenges or whatever. And, you know, you've, like last night, you found the Corfin is, you know, like an old man, told us to do asylum seekers. So, some people are just focused on one particular campaign, on one niche. I see an increase nowadays of uh, allies and you know, travellers oh, and other groups and disabled people and other people and so on. What would you say in 2023 for people thinking of activism? What tips would you have? I know it's probably in the book, but if you can name three tips. I it's sure we have hundreds of voluntary groups, hundreds of voluntary groups, in Clay and alone, I don't know I mean, hundreds of that really. And the Clare Public Partnership really has 320 members, member groups really, you know, from the tidy towns to uh, campaigning on the environment, campaigning on disability, campaigning on the travellers, you know, to raising all kinds of issues really. So there's loads of space there for people to get in there and get involved really. That's why I might say that. You need to look at what's local to you and you got to have the Red Cross to Red Cross really, you know. Recent times with Ukrainians that are mad for people and then train you in Red Cross and train you as well, like, you know, as a volunteer. And of course, we have the GEA, which will train you as well if you want to do stuff as well, like, you know. So there's loads of things to do. It depends what you want to do, like, what you're interested in. But patience, of course, patience and frustration. You're not going to win all the arguments. You're not going to win all the definitely not going to win all the arguments. But you'll have to win some of the arguments. But by coalescing together with other people, we found that down the Clare Leader Forum, we coalesced with the Clare Leader Forum and other, uh, sorry, the Clare Public Partnership and other organisations coalesced. We had a demonstration, a demonstration, a rally there recently in Ennis, and we got a couple of groups together, they had with the Clare Women's Network and the Clare Public Partnership, and we, did, we, we, we went up and down McConnell Street, the main street of Ennis, uh, our rally, you know, looking for personal assistance, legislation. So you can, you can have allies like that that come up and help you. And likewise, you can help them as well. What, what, what's the most effective campaign you were ever in part of? Uh, uh, what made you successful, or even if it was small, like getting car parking sorted, not even just going to Strasbourg, but like what makes a group no, I think, I think the more rural group, the more active group, was a very effective group, really. I know the one that more The one that more What a more campaign. It took 10 years, mind you. But we all know our strengths and our weaknesses, really, because we had people like Ian Duggar, who was a great thinker, and the late John Duggar, who was a writer, uh, great thinker, and then of activists like myself, setting up the music and getting in bands, and Christian Wood came, and Shami Shadow came, and all that, putting money into the kitty and all that business, and then going to Dublin, marching to Dublin, and all that business. So, I mean, it took persistence, really. But we were together, we were united. We had regular meetings around the table and we had 20 people and 55 people. And it was a good balance as well. We had great friendships, like, great friendships. And um, I found that very, very stimulating as well. And I still great friends with some of those guys that were cool up there. They had to be I found it very interesting, really, that some of those guys really. They were. They were. Uh, I can say they weren't bitter towards the other side. They didn't want to be bitter because the issue was the centre of one of should not be there. We were all in favour of the centre, but we wanted to cut a or we wanted to kill the buy or kill the owner. The other crowd wanted to inside get inside the one of more. That was the difference. We all wanted the centre. And surprisingly, the people in the village of Corfein, outside the village, or teachers and of course politicians were driving the Fianna Fáil were driving it big time, really. Brendan Daly and Tony Galeen were driving it big time. And the Fianna Gale of course were driving it, really. But they couldn't see the point of having it in the village, of having it in Glyphenora, where the pretty space there and the services were around there and to build the people, really. They couldn't see it, but took 10 court cases and, you know, Keep them up their property, or what will it be up their property? The seven plaintiffs, which is being asked, 
So take it off your house and your land. Over land. Oh yeah, 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 over land, okay. Give up your farm there. It's enough your farm in case you lost the case. Of I like to make sure you are you you didn't get fish on the other side, you're still getting farmers so whatever. So that doesn't always happen. Oh no, we didn't say I mean I I I think I, I was a kind of a guy that time in the nineties like where it just looked off my shoulder like right? just I mean I'm concentrating on the effort, not to be good. Because being from the village you get you get shouted at and you get cold shoulders, you know what I mean? From people but you just you know. It's sad really because a couple of a couple of other guys really, like James Howard who's mentioned in the book there, and he's died since. It affected him because he was a farmer and he needed people from time to time, like any farmer would, but the men, like, you know, for helping the hay or helping whatever catches or whatever, or when he's sick, you know, that somebody would come in and help him miss the cows, you know what I mean? All that neighborhood stuff. Yeah. If, if you could pick up a book by another activist in Ireland who has to get rid of that book, if they put activists in Ireland, would you love to read? Their stories. Is there any one or two spent to try? There's so many great actors here. There's one there beside me, they're quite tough. He's a man that I'm quite tough to read his book. He has done a lot. And the streets, I don't know who's written a book recently about what happened uh, in Mr. Van, uh, the reason more recent thing, the refugees coming in. And right wing right wing elements tried to take it over. And and put people against and condemn the refugees and stop people from taking refugees, but she won they won the argument at the end of the day, treated and then they because they were persistent and they were cohesive group really. They weren't going to be divided really. So they were very Yeah, that's a lot of different people should know it's people that make great books really, you know. I'm sure Dan will tell you great uh, books in Limbo here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we better leave it at that we've got a Thanks for coming. Thank you for your time. There's a beautiful place by the burn called Carl Finn. And that's the place I return when my days come to an end. Such a sweet spot, I've never forgot. It's people, the salt of the earth. And around my tooth lake, after my wake, lay me down in the place of my birth. In Carlton, a place so welcoming. Oh.